Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to talk about some art news. Now, I kind of want to talk about a very specific person, not just a one specific event that made the news, because this gentleman <laughs> makes the news all the time, and he is fascinating. So his name is Arthur Brand, and he is a 52-year-old Dutch art crime investigator, and he's considered the most famous, and some folks call him the Indiana Jones of the art world. Now, he this gentleman works any hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and according to the CIA, the illegal art market is the third largest criminal enterprise in the world, right under guns and drugs. And about 30% of all art on the market is either fake or it has been tampered with. So if you plan on investing in major art pieces, please, please, please make sure to have multiple authentication sources. So let's talk about this gentleman. In the beginning, Arthur started to collect coins and realized that many of them were fake and that the fakes were really, really good. And when he was an exchange student in Spain, he went on a treasure hunt with some local folks that resulted in the discovery of three Roman coins. And this inspired him to conduct detective work on his own, even though his official vocation is art historian and art consultant. So, <laughs> to date, Arthur has recovered over 200 pieces of art, and he's found some very famous pieces by some very famous artists. And one specifically I want to talk about is this one. Now, in 1999, Picasso's painting entitled Bus de Femme, which is pictured here, was stolen from a Sheik's super yacht in the French Riviera. Now, despite a huge award um, reward to find this painting, the investigation made no progress and it was eventually shelved. And this painting is a portrait of Picasso's mistress and it is unsigned because he never sold it. So, in 2019, after his painting was believed to have changed hands about 10 times in the black market, Arthur was able to find it, and this is the portrait of Dora Maar, and she was an artist, and she was Picasso's muse. And here he is sitting with it because it spent the night at his house until the proper authorities were able to pick it up the next day. Another thing he has found that I want to talk about that sort of skyrocketed him into this fame and notoriety was his investigation that led him to infiltrating the Nazi underworld. And this starts with a Third Reich sculptor named Joseph Thorak, who was commissioned by Hitler to make these two huge horses. And each horse stands about five to 10 meters or 16 to 33 feet. And these walking horses were believed to be destroyed. So <clears throat> this search took place from 2013 to 2015 and it was so detailed and so extensive that he actually wrote a whole book about it. And last year, this book was translated into English. And the book is called Hitler's Horses. Now, I haven't read it yet, but I can't wait for our library to get a copy because it sounds absolutely fascinating and the reviews are very good. So during his career, Arthur has helped find artworks and all these different things. He helped recover Salvador Dali's. He's helped find Van Gogh paintings. Here is a ring he found that was owned by Oscar Wilde. <laughs> I know, not crazy. And he found a 1600 year old Byzantine mosaic stolen in the 70s. Um, here is a 15, 15th century manuscript that he recovered and this is just absolutely stunning. Um, he sometimes works with the criminals to be able to acquire these stolen pieces. But so here's what gets me and here's kind of why I wanted to talk about him. Arthur has an internet presence. He's on Twitter 
At any given time, he has 10 to 15 stolen art projects he's looking for, and the bulk of his job is helping with authentication and helping Jewish families trace artworks missing since the Second World War. And he posts about this stuff. He tweets, tweets about what's been located, what he's looking for, recent thefts, um, criminals that have been caught, and it is absolutely fascinating. Um, he's also on Instagram. This was one of his latest posts that he posted um, a couple months ago. And he doesn't have a ton of posts on there, but he promises to use this platform for pieces that he recovers. So <laughs> if you want to see what he has found, head over to his Instagram. If you want to see what he's working on or what has recently been stolen, or sometimes he's able to get sales halted of things that are illegal, head over to his Twitter. Now, I was thinking a thing and I wasn't the only one. So now that his face is out there, like how are criminals not realizing who he is? Because that's kind of what fame does. And I wasn't the only person that had this question. And this was asked on his latest Twitter post, like, don't the criminals know you by now? And he responded, to answer your question, thieves will never learn. So even though his face is still out there and there are tons of articles about him and he has an internet social media presence, he's still able to find all these amazing pieces and work on all these amazing projects and help find things for these museums and for these people that have had pieces lost, stolen, or taken from them. And I think that is just incredible. He is just a really interesting person. So I will link in the description box all the different ways that you can connect with Arthur if you would like and follow him around and follow his adventures up to date. Because there are is so much going on in the art world with thefts and findings and it is just incredible. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.